Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. This is our monthly TV show that tells you about the people working, in Sheboygan, working for Sheboygan County and the services they provide. Uh, I'm the co-host, Dan Lemieux, the County Board Chairman, along with Adam Payne, our Administrative Coordinator. And this month, our guest is Dale Pulse, our Director of our Healthcare Facilities. Uh, there's been a lot of activity the last, well, there's been a lot of activity forever here, healthcare <laughs> facilities, but especially the last year or so, Dale, and, and we'd like to you know, talk a little bit today about the things that have been happening and, and uh, the construction that's going on out there. But first, why don't you just start a, a little bit uh, telling us about yourself and your roles and responsibilities at the healthcare facilities. Yes. It, it makes me reflect a little bit when you talk about uh, um, myself. But I've been working in uh, administration and long-term care facilities for the last 29 years. When I think about that, um, it's gone quickly, which to me means that I've enjoyed it and I, and I truly have. But in 1994, um, I, I came to Sheboygan County as the healthcare administrator at Rocky Knoll and was in that position until uh, August of 2001 when I was named the healthcare director. Uh, for the facilities. I continue to have the same responsibilities as, as Administrator Rocky Knoll, but in addition as the healthcare center's uh, director, um, I'm responsible for the overall oversight supervision of, of the other two uh, facilities. Of course, the, the major tasks there are planning, organizing, directing, and controlling the, the operations. Um, I work closely with the health care committee and other uh, liaison committees through meetings and, and uh, through reports to them. So those are, are basically the, the, the main responsibilities that I have. There's a lot of things we could talk about with the health care facilities. Uh, we have a large group, uh, one of our largest group of county employees working at these facilities, um, a fairly large budget, but the thing that's been in the media the most in, in the last year has been the, uh, the construction of our, our new addition to Rocky Knoll. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, that construction and the status of where we are in that construction? Well, I can tell you that it, the majority of it is nearing completion. The addition and the remodeling are virtually completed. And we are now just starting to, to refurbish the 1972 building. And the reason why that's starting right now is because we had residents occupying it until just recently. Uh, and that is projected to start on uh, May 13th with a completion date near July 1st. We will have, when we're done, 195 licensed beds. There will be 37 beds in a new addition that will be for the developmentally disabled. We will have um, 158 skilled nursing beds. Of those, 99 will be um, strictly geriatric. Within those, even, we have a 16-bed dementia unit. And then the 59 additional beds will be for the severely and uh, persistently mentally ill. We um, are looking to then relocate to within the next few months. And that, was, that was going to be my next question. The, the main reason, the impetus for uh, the construction of Rocky Knoll and the changes that we're making was what do we do with Comprehensive Health Center? And, and this is part of our whole consolidation move. When, when exactly will that consolidation take place? We're planning to do that the week of July 15th through the 19th. Probably the Friday prior to that and the, and the Monday, uh, July 15th, we will be bringing equipment, furniture, um, and some of the personal belongings of the residents. And then on the, the um, 16th and 17th, we will relocate the residents to, uh, to their new home. And how many residents are we talking about? These are the remaining residents at Comprehensive Health Center now? Yes. How, how many are we talking about? Well, as of today, we have 88 residents. 88? Mm-hmm and they will all be going to Rocky Knoll? Yes, yes they will. Um, again, divided you, up between... You them. talked about the 37-bed unit, so obviously some are going to be in the new unit, some are going to be uh, in, in the original building. 34 will go to the new building and, and the 54 
uh, to the 1972 building. You said that the construction was nearing completion. Um, we just had a meeting out there, the building committee, uh, basically ending up their work. Uh, obviously, some landscaping needs to be cleaned up yet and, and a few final touches put on, but the, the project was bigger than just rocking all and this new addition and the, and the renovations you made in the, in the original building. What about Sunny Ridge? We're, we're going to be down to two campuses, the Rocky Knoll campus, the Sunny Ridge campus. Did part of this project involve Sunny Ridge also? Yes, it did. And, and we did a number of things uh, with the physical plant as well as uh, some residents transferring from Comprehensive. With the physical plant, we've tried to uh, do some upgrading aesthetically as well as within the, the, uh, the equipment areas. For example, we put new lighting in, we put new ceiling, uh, tile in. Um, there's been air conditioning hopefully by the end of the year throughout uh, Sunny Ridge. Well, that project will be completed. There's a brand new courtyard on the uh, east end of the, of the building that is truly going to be nice for, for residents and, and families. They've done, again, some aesthetically uh, fine things in the areas of their, their snack bar area with murial, murals and um, paintings. Carpet did the, uh, the chapel area. So some of those things have certainly, I think, done a lot for the appearance of Sunny Ridge. But probably more importantly, as a part of the project, as you were talking about, we have moved 14 residents from uh, Comprehensive over to the fifth floor. And that's all part of integrating and um, providing a continuum of care that we want to uh, achieve in the uh, health care centers. Those people are with similar residents, with staff that are trained to uh, provide services for those individuals. So we're real pleased with um, that transfer. And when was that? When did that transfer take place? They did that in March. So the res the residents that you moved have been there for a month and a half, two months now. How how is that working? They have the residents have adjusted very well. Um, they've well, it's, it's a very nice location for them. Um, there's an excellent uh, activities area, dining room, and they have their own private rooms. And in talking to Julie Jolitz, the administrator of Sunny Ridge, they've gotten into the, the, the activities that are a part of, of that building. And so we're, we're happy with how well they have adjusted as well as staff. Family members pleased with it too? Yes, yes, much, very much so. Prior to their moving over, we had an opportunity to have them come and visit the area. And I know uh, I had talked to people that, well, we're closer to where we live and, and we, we like what we see here as far as the facility where our uh, family member will be living. Uh, we're talking about uh, the consolidation and, and um, having two facilities now, Rocky Knoll and Sunny Ridge, and where we used to have three. Uh, consolidating, downsizing, these are words that have been used. Uh, there's maybe a little concern that, um, that we're trying to get out of the business uh, of, of nursing home care. And, and I, I realize this isn't one of the things that we had planned on talking about, but um, it just seems to me that because of the, the construction out at Rocky Knoll, the changes we're making at Sunny Ridge, that the immediate future we're going to be we're going to be there to to provide care for the elderly. Yes, yes, I think uh, you know we have a mission statement that we want to fulfill in the <laughs> in the near future, and that's to provide for um, Sheboygan County residents. How many how many beds will we still have, um, even though we're downsizing from from the number that we had maybe ten years ago? Uh, just do you just, can you tell me how many beds approximately that we will have in both facilities? We'll have 319 at Sunny Ridge and then 195 at, at Rocky Knoll. So five, uh, 500. 514, uh, 514, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So we're still a fairly large presence in the nursing home uh, field in Sheboygan County. Yes, we certainly are. Thank you. I, I think about how the chairman opened this program discussing all the activities out there when I started this position in January of 99 uh, for weeks and months and perhaps couple of years there you couldn't pick up the newspaper without reading about the controversy and what we, what we, 
what's the county going to do? Where are we going to consolidate? Where are we going to build at Rocky Knoll? Where are we going to build a freestanding? Where are we going to get out of the business? A tremendous amount of controversy, and it's, it's really gratifying to see things come together. And it's happened with a, a great deal of public input and a lot of people being in, involved with uh, the success of this project. Linda Martin was the, the health care center's director when I started, again, three and a half years ago. Gene Larrabee has been on this program two different occasions. He was involved with uh, many of the decisions in providing recommendations to the county board on the, the ultimate com compromise. And, and it's refreshing to have Dale in this position now. He's been not only our administrator at Rocky Knoll, but has really, I think, Dale, you've really brought the skill of the teamwork approach and getting people involved with the consolidation, implementing the consolidation, the plan that the county board uh, unanimously approved. What have you done? What steps have you taken to get families, the, res the residents, your staff involved with implementing the consolidation plan? Well, I begin with the staff. I think shortly after we broke ground and started construction, we formed a number of committees that we felt needed to deal with specific issues, for example, with residents, with staff, with furniture and equipment, with uh, physicians, ancillary services. So we began to plan with them the different challenges that we knew we were going to involve or um, have with those different areas uh, uh, for hopefully having a satisfactory consolidation. Those have been ongoing now. For, and, and we continued to work with them. One of the things that helped us really in this was the transfer to Sunny Ridge because it was sort of a trial. And we've, we've learned from that too. But those are going on as far as staff are concerned. Community real, um, communications is another area, particularly with staff. Um, we had employees and assistants come in and talk about change and relating to what was gonna happen with our staff. So I believe we, we've seen, um, you know, successes from doing that with our staff. Residents, resident council is probably one of the big um, communication devices. We've, we've tried to keep them updated, get input from them through those meetings. Those are held monthly. When we move residents, for example, to Sunny Ridge, there is a planning conference way in advance that we deal with the family and the, the residents so that they have input on that. Um, we've had family meetings again to get them involved in uh, suggestions and ideas. Going back to staff, we more recently in the last month or two have had tours of the building. That's been very helpful because now people from Comprehensive have had an opportunity to see it, made suggestions that um, we missed. So um, even volunteers we had a volunteer recognition banquet there for the comprehensive uh, volunteers, and they, they got a chance to see the building, were very pleased with it, and thought that um, you know, the residents were gonna truly enjoy the new, the new uh, home. So we've used all those avenues to, to get uh, these different uh, people involved. Well, I think about the role of the building committee. The county board ultimately came together with a co compromise based on a great deal of public input and discussion and consultants and that process and then we had to go about actually implementing it and developing the plan. We hired an architect, we had a construction manager and attending some of those building committee meetings to see your staff coming in and making suggestions along the way uh, with the chapel at Rocky Knoll, the volunteers came in and, and some of the residents and mm -hmm. were concerned about a wall that went all the way through and and I think there was a great appreciation from a standpoint of there was an opportunity to, to be heard and the building committee made adjustments. In fact, uh, what did we learn? There were three, 400 change orders along the way, mm -hmm. you know, minor refinements here and there to further improve upon the plan. And again, we're talking about an $8.9 million investment. So when the county board chairman mentioned earlier that are we gonna be in this business, I think we are going to be in this business. The county board not only made the decision, but we're making an yes. incredible investment in our operations. You touched, you touched on it, and, and the chairman raised it as well, when we first initially moved some people to Sunny Ridge, and, and there was a real positive article that came out. How are people responding at this point? Do you feel there's a lot of enthusiasm, and they're, they're accepting that change is going to occur? What's, what's the general tone? Overall, particularly with staff, there, there is um, growing acceptance of that, and I think it's helped with the tours. 
people knowing what what is what their their physical location is going to be and so I, I I see positiveness coming from from our staff residents that moved like within Rocky Knoll to uh, the north building they're adjusting uh, quite well some of the comprehensive residents particularly that are going to be in the ISFMR are um, we're very excited boy I want to pick out my room so overall I think it, a very positive uh, atmosphere and I think your decision to have the the staff go with the residents to keep that continuity certainly has to help as well I know they're involved with getting the room set up and decorated and, and that's got to, to provide more comfort in the transition well meanwhile while we're moving to the new we still have the comprehensive health care center the the outdated facility that we're going to be vacating and the health care centers committee appointed a, a subcommittee to look at the the sale of that property or uh, disposition, Dispos thank you, of that property. <laughs> and uh, where are we at with that? What's happening with the Comprehensive Health Care Center? Well, currently we have five parties that, that have showed an interest in either um, a par the partial property or the entire property. And at the Health Care Committee meeting tonight, um, this subcommittee will be recommending that a letter um, <laughs> will be sent to interested parties, um, inviting them to tour and then to uh, request some f uh, formal offers that we would want back by June 3rd of this year. So yes, we have some interest. Very good. And, and in short, it's what, 65-acre uh, grounds, a number of buildings. What, what generally do we have for sale? What's out there? 60, yes, you're right, 65 acres, which approximately, I believe, 45 are tillable acres. And then the major complex, uh, we've got some outlying farm buildings as well as an old laundry and um, some garages in the boiler room. So okay. there's a number of buildings. All right. And, you, and this you touched on earlier as well, keeping the community aware of activities, keeping them um, not only aware of the consolidation and, and when the dedication is going to be, but also what's happening with comprehensive. What steps have you taken to, to make sure that we're uh, keeping the public aware of what's going on? Well, you mentioned earlier we've had excellent press coverage through news stories as, as things uh, have been unfolding but we also provide uh, a I think it is bi-monthly newsletter that we get out to um, clinics and, and other points in the community that uh, we were able to let people know what what's uh, going on Recently, in the last couple of months, the community relations director and myself have gone to a number of service organizations to, to let them know what, what's uh, happening with the consolidation. In the health care committee meetings, uh, we, we, we try to continue. Um, and with the, the timetable of the overall consolidation and, and the budget to date, um, what's been your sense? Are we, are we on track? I, yes, we definitely are. Uh, Timetable is excellent. If we're done by July 1st, we're, we're well within our, our target there. And when's the dedication going to be held? Dedication will be held on July 23rd, I'm sorry, <laughs> June 23rd, uh, beginning at 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, following the dedication ceremony, we will uh, have an open house. Tours will uh, be available at that time. and um, We're looking to start in the new uh, reception area and conclude in the, the uh, dining room of the ICFMR for, for refreshments. So June 23rd at Rocky Knoll and the, the public's invited? Yes, indeed. Very good. Well, thank you, Dale. One of the things that the Healthcare Center's committee has done in the last couple of years is set up a foundation. Uh, Dale, could you tell us a little bit about the foundation and how it works and how it, how it provides some financial aid to the facilities? It was originally set up to help supplement uh, as far as with revenues, there are some, th uh, with our current revenues, there's some things that we just, you know, are not maybe as able to do. And so it was set up to kind of deal with those type of things. Um, by having it being a 501c3 status, it does act as a charitable organization. Uh, 
with the contributions that we get, it directly, it, it is for directly benefiting the residents of, of our health care centers. And the board, this foundation board is made up of who? What, what, what type of individuals? Do you have the board filled? We still have a, a couple vacancies on the board. Um, there's a member of the health care centers is on it. I'm a member of the board. Um, Tim Finch, the finance director for the uh, county, is a member. It meets quarterly. What, and you still have some openings on this board? Yes. What type of yes. person are you looking for? Well, we're looking Just for... Just in case a, some of our viewers are, are, uh, are looking at something to do with their spare time. <laughs> what, what type of a person are you looking for? An individual that certainly does have the time to devote to it, but one that, that is community-oriented, particularly interested in um, people uh, in, in the healthcare care faci facilities and, and trying to improve their uh, lives. You mentioned the the way the foundation is set up. If, if I would donate to that, is that money tax deductible? And, and if I donate, what, what would you use that money for? Yes, the, the foundation, as I said, is a 501c3 organization. So as far as the law will permit, it's tax deductible. Um, we've used them for a number of things, depending on if, as an individual, if you specified exactly what you wanted, it, it would be done. Just recently, we had a resident pass away that was very much interested in music. So the family uh, donated money for, for any type of musical uh, item. Um, it could be for um, decorating a hospice room, which we did at, at, at Sunny Ridge, or purchasing certain types of equipment, uh, bathing equipment that um, is needed by our residents. And how do you... I realize if I, if I would donate to that, that would be a contribution to the foundation. Are there any other ways that you have set up to promote the foundation and to raise funds? Any, anything planned in the near future? Well, one of the things I, I mentioned is in, in communicating to the, the, the community about what was going on the consolidation project, we also took the opportunity to explain the foundation. We have brochures that, that we distribute to them. Um, but we are planning a golf outing in the fall, and then there's another uh, uh, a calendar raffle that I believe the community relations director said that we would be trying to do. So we'll be um, there's a couple projects that we have in mind right now. And if our viewers are interested in those projects, how would they find out about a little more about them? Or how would they find out more about the foundation? How, who who would they call? How who would they get in contact with? Jennifer Holzman is the Community Relations Director, and she would be the person to contact at Rocky Knoll, at, and her telephone number is 467-6464, and she can explain to them you know, how they can be donors, if they're interested in being on the, the committee, and, and give them a background of, about the foundation in general. Would that also be the person that, for example, if a civic group, you, you mentioned that you and, and Jennifer had been out to some, some different organizations uh, promoting the healthcare facilities and the consolidation projects. Uh, is that who they would contact if they're looking for a speaker to come to their uh, event and, yes. and talk to them? And, yes. And you would be willing to? Oh, uh, well, we're more than interested, you know, very much interested in being able to, to do that. Um, we have a few minutes left yet, Dale. Do you think that you could, uh, just in more general terms, and we've been talking about the consolidation and what that means for the residents from the, from the Comprehensive Health Center that will be moving uh, to both Rocky Knoll and Sunny Ridge, but just to maybe for a minute or two, just an overall uh, overview of, of our healthcare facilities and what type of residents that we're, we're providing services to. Um, people, Think of uh, 20 years ago when our healthcare centers, our nursing homes, were more like retirement homes. Mm -hmm. And you'd go there and you'd sell your house and you'd live there for the last 20 years of your life. Is that the atmosphere we have now in our in our healthcare facilities, or, or has that changed? It certainly has changed in the in the last 20 years. It isn't a retirement home anymore. And when we look at Rock and Old Campus we're going to have probably five different distinct 
populations that we're going to be caring for. Um, with the developmentally disabled, the chronically mentally ill, and then the geriatric population who, if it's not just general conditions, may have uh, physical needs through, through Medicare um, uh, therapies that are, they're eligible for. I mentioned earlier that we have a, uh, now a dedicated dementia unit. So we're, we have a, a broad um, number that, of residents that we're caring for. When you for. say a dedicated dementia unit, is that, would that be the same thing as an Alzheimer's yes. unit? That's yes. what some, some places would call them. We have 16 beds that, um, again, will be so that, as, as we know, some of those people wander. It'll have a security system to keep them safe. And um, we're, we're just completing some education for staff that were, were interested and selected for that unit to work there. And, and we're real pleased with how that's going and, and uh, how we'll be able to meet their needs a little more specifically than we have in the past. The other concern that people would have is, is that, <clears throat> well, there are two concerns. One is we had a lot of empty beds all over the county. Another concern is we're getting so small they won't have enough beds. What is the status in our facilities right now as far as, as availability of beds if, if somebody uh, has a need to, to place a loved one in a nursing home? Right now, Rocky Knoll would be basically at capacity. But the, we've, we've come down to, and will be at 99 licensed beds for the uh, North Building. Sunny Ridge has openings. And I think because of the type of population we're talking about with Medicare people, it's short-term stays. We will be turning over, um, and, I, and I still think that we will meet the needs of, of uh, our uh, you know, uh, residents of Sheboygan County. There may be a person having been on a waiting list for a little bit of time, but I, I don't see that as, as uh, anything of any length. Where do you get most of your referrals for, for new residents? Are they coming from hospitals? Or are they coming from doctors? Uh, they're not coming from the people that are retiring and selling their house anymore and looking for a, for a retirement home. So are you getting most of your referrals from the medical profession? Yes, yes we do. They may come directly from home, but it's as a result of they've, they've, they've tried to maintain them you know, as long as they can, and then the doctor refers them. Okay. So that's where most of them are coming through doctor referrals and, and, and hospital referrals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Dale. It's been very uh, interesting. Um, I'm sure our viewers have a little bit better idea of, of the services that our healthcare centers are providing and, and what's going to happen with our consolidation. And we look forward to seeing them on June 23rd. 23rd, Sunday afternoon. Yes. Correct? And uh, they can view the open house and, and the facility, the new facility, and, and stay for some refreshments. Thank you. Next month at our uh, County Government Working For You show, we're going to have um, Jim Groff, uh, the director of our Child Support Department, and we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, the services that they provide um, and the, the way their office runs, the collections they perform, and how they work with the state in providing this service. Uh, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again next month. Uh, with Sheboygan County Government working for you. Thank you.